The gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Johnson, is recognized for three minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the BRIC Act would simply allow for the consideration and completion of any judicial review regarding the EPA's 2015 national emission standards for hazardous air pollutants for the brick, clay, and tile industries before requiring compliance. So why is this important? Because this rule needlessly jeopardizes good-paying jobs all across America, as the chart right here next to me clearly demonstrates. And for what reason? Why are they jeopardizing these jobs? The EPA itself concedes in the rule that and I quote, we do not expect that the combined emissions would result in substantial cumulative health and environmental effects. Instead, the real health impacts due to this rule will be felt by the workers who lose their jobs, their health benefits, and even the education and training opportunities offered by their employer. The brick industry primarily consists of small family-owned businesses. They are often located in small communities that depend on the plant for good-paying jobs. To comply with the EPA's requirement, these small businesses will be forced to borrow millions of dollars to pay for the required control technology. Many brick companies are already struggling to find the capital for plant modernization. I can't imagine how difficult it will be for these companies to secure the needed investments to pay for new control equipment, equipment that provides zero return on investment. And let's not forget that the brick industry has already been through this before. The EPA finalized a similar rule in 2003 that required brick companies to spend millions of dollars on control equipment. A few years later, a federal court vacated that rule. Unfortunately, the brick industry couldn't roll back the clock and recover the investments they had made. And worse yet, the EPA's new emission rules use the reductions achieved by the vacated rule as the baseline for further reduction requirements. So the industry essentially got no credit for the hard work that they had already done. This history further underscores why this legislation is so important. It also baffles me when I hear some of my colleagues say the BRIC Act is not needed because parties can already seek a judicial stay. However, the EPA has effectively indicated in a statement for the record submitted to the Energy and Commerce Committee that they would oppose any request to stay the rule. Further, while the EPA's Clean Power Plan was recently stayed, the parties were only able to obtain relief by going to the U.S. Supreme Court. Here, the EPA's rule threatens the very existence of small brick and tile companies. These companies do not have unlimited resources to litigate against the federal government, and their jobs should not be put at risk due to a rule which has been vacated once already and has yet to be reviewed by the courts. Mr. Speaker, the brick industry is part of our American culture. It has helped build some of the most iconic buildings, cities, and towns in our existence in our country today. We must make certain our regulations and laws preserve this industry, not destroy it. The BRIC Act will do that. I urge my colleagues to support this important legislation. And